Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. In this video today, we are going to talk about the science behind why it is okay to clean your sponge filters in tap water. And I wanted to bring you down here as those of you who have been watching the channel know, this is one of our prized tanks. This is our 50 gallon low boy that houses the vast majority of our shell dwellers, our multi-cyclids. This is a tank that we absolutely love. And yet every single week, we come in here, we've got two sponge filters and an internal canister filter, and we clean these sponge filters in tap water. I've done this video, I did a video on how to clean sponge filters before. I'll put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. But today I wanted to show you why we do things the way we do and the science behind why it's okay. So yes, every single week we have our handy dandy bucket. Here is our sponge filters and this is exactly what we do. We take the sponges out, we put them in our bucket. We'll do the other one over here as well. And here is our other sponge. Just place right there. And then we have the internal canister filter, which we will also do. This is going to make a little bit of noise while I'm pulling this thing off of here. So here's the internal canister filter part and all of this. Let's go see where it's going. So the actual time elapsed, maybe just a couple of minutes, and we're gonna go ahead and put all this stuff back in. And I'm gonna tell you, show you, why doing this has caused absolutely no harm to this tank. All right, everyone, so I wanted to talk about the science now as to why what we did in that 50 gallon low boy and what we do in every single one of our tanks every week for years has never caused an ammonia or a nitrite spike because when I did the original video on how we clean sponge filters, I still got lots of comments about how we're going to hurt our fish and destroy our cycle and do all these horrible things. And it just isn't so. It hasn't happened. Now, let's look at the science. So first thing, I found this article that was prepared for the Environmental Protection Agency, and there's a couple things I want to point out here to kind of set the stage as to why we don't see the problems that we should be seeing in our aquariums. And so I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. There's a couple articles I want to show you, but I'm just going to point out the highlights so that we get a better understanding of what's going on. I think this article does a really good job of outlining the types of microbes that are involved in the nitrification process. We often think of the nitrogen cycle happening in our fish tank, and really that's not true. Really what's happening is the first half of the nitrogen cycle, ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate. And so this particular article, I will put this down in the description below if you want to read through it, but it does a good job of showing us here we've got our chemical equation, and it shows us this NH3, this is ammonia, and so the fish are producing the ammonia, Microbes take this ammonia, they use oxygen as well. That's why we have to have a well aerated aquarium in order to have the nitrification process happen. They convert the ammonia into nitrite. And we can see that right here. And so that's the first step, ammonia into nitrite. Now, what are the microbes responsible for this? Because this is going to set the stage for a little bit later. Nitrosomonas is a big one, right? It is most frequently identified. But there are others, and so here we can see the nitrosococcus, the nitrosuspiria, uh, and the nitrosolobus. So these are some of the other ones that are involved in going from ammonia to nitrite. Now, the next step in the nitrification process, which we commonly call cycling a tank, or the nitrogen cycle, is this right here, and this is nitrite, which was produced as a waste product above, to nitrate. 
The nitrate, the NO3, is what we are usually trying to control via water changes. And so when we do water changes every single week, it's the nitrate that we're trying to keep for us, ideally below 20 parts per million. And we do water change percentages based on that. Okay, so now that we have that part, let's talk about why this matters. So we got nitrobacter, uh, nitrospi uh, nitrospina, nitrococcus, and nitrospira that is responsible for doing nitrite to nitrate. All right, everyone, so I wanted to show you this next article. This was done back in 1991. Yes, it is older, but there have been lots of research that has corroborated these findings over the years. 30-year-old research that shows what we just did really isn't going to have a major impact on the microbes and the sponge filters. Let's talk about why. This is from the American Society of Microbiology, the Applied and Environmental Microbiology Journal. What these researchers were trying to do was look at the link between environmental microbes that go through the nitrification process. In other words, the microbes that we just talked about in the previous, the previous article and look at how chloramines impact their survival rates. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. I really just want to hit one figure that I think is really important, and that is this one here, figure one the inactivation of nitrifying bacteria by monochloramine. All right, so these are the microbes that are responsible for the cycle inside of our aquarium. This is the nitrobacter, the nitrosomonas type microbes. This is a line of best fit and was determined by regression analysis. And so here's the important point for this figure. We don't have to understand the line of best fit and all this stuff. We just need to understand two things. On the x-axis, we've got the monochloramine concentration in milligrams per liter that goes up to five. And on the Y, we have 99% inactivation time. In other words, the amount of time it took in minutes for 99% of the microbes in that environment to be killed by chloramine based on the concentration on the horizontal axis. Okay, why does this matter? In tap water, we usually see concentrations of chloramine up to around four milligrams per liter. So we can see on the very right hand side, we've got that concentration here. It generally doesn't go higher than that. What this figure is telling us is how many minutes does it take to kill pretty much all of the microbes at four milligrams per liter. We work our way over and we can see, well, it's over an hour, somewhere around an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. So if we have a bunch of microbes in a sponge filter, we chuck it in chlorinated tap water with chloramines, and we left it in there for an hour, hour and a half, you'd probably wipe out most of your microbes. However, what we just did in the video, in the intro, is I took the sponge filters out of the tank. I rinsed them off. Each sponge filter maybe was exposed to that water for around 15, 20 seconds because when we clean our sponge filters every single week, the way in which we do it, they don't get very dirty. So a quick 15, 20 seconds in the tap water, squeeze it out real fast, back in the tank it goes, maybe those sponge filters are out of the water for a couple minutes if we've got a few of them that we're working on at the same time. That is nowhere near the hour to hour and a half that it's going to take to kill off the vast majority of the microbes. Are we getting some loss? Absolutely. But here's the thing. The microbes that are responsible for the nitrification process in our tanks aren't just in our filter media. They're lining the actual filter itself. They're on the glass. They're on the rocks, on the surface of our substrate, on driftwood, on plants, fake or real. Any surface area that we have that's got sufficient amounts of oxygen are most likely going to have nitrifying bacteria. Therefore, the small amount that we kill on our filter media isn't going to have a major impact in our tank. And this study is showing us why. Now, would I go and take filter media from a brand new tank and rinse it in tap water right away? No. Usually what we do is we wait about four weeks or so after the tank has been fully cycled before we start to clean our media in tap water. That gives sufficient time for the microbes to build up everywhere else and in the filter itself and we've never had a problem. 70 to 80 tanks we usually have up and running. We clean all of our sponge filters. We replace all of our media every single week. That's one of the reasons why our tanks can look the way they look, just using sponge filters, because they have the ability to suck in all of the, the mechanical filtration, the, 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 the 
stuff floating in the water sufficiently because they're not all clogged up. So I wanted to share this with you. I wanted to share a little bit of why we don't have any issues. Again, if it's something that you're not comfortable with doing, then continue to do it in tank water or non-chlorinated tap water or non-chlorinated water. That's perfectly fine, but I just wanted to kind of clear it up from a scientific perspective. If you like this sort of thing and you want to see more of these aquarium science series videos, let me know in the comment section below. Leave a thumbs up, thumbs down if you like it. We've got another video that I did recently that talked about uh, more aquarium science. That's on the upper right-hand corner. Appreciate you being here, and we'll see you in the next one.